And this seismogram shows that there were two events. There's one event there and one event there, 10 seconds apart, one at 9.02 and 3 seconds, the other at 9.02 and 13 seconds. Here's a larger one of it, an enlargement of it. You can see there's one event there and there's one event there. And immediately the government came out and said it was a 1,200 pound ammonia nitrate bomb. And then they raised it up to, I think, 2,500, and then they raised it up to 4,800. And uh, knowing that an ammonia nitrate fertilizer bomb, we'll call it an ANFO bomb, only has one detonation, I said to myself, you know, there's something that doesn't fit right here. The University of Oklahoma says there's two ground swells, two detonations, and the government says it was an ammonia nitrate bomb. And that started me on my way, and uh, so I started checking into it. And um, I received a phone call from Michael Reconosuto. Michael's a friend of mine, ex-CIA. Uh, been set up and framed on a drug deal. He's serving 30 years at the federal penitentiary. And Michael said, uh, I said, Michael, are you, are you familiar with the Oklahoma City bombing? Yes. Um, let me read this seismogram to you and give you some information. He says, Ted, that's my bomb. Now, he didn't mean that was his bomb that exploded, but he used to, his family owned the Hercules Manufacturing Company in the Silicon Valley, and they developed this electrohydrodynamic gaseous fuel device. We'll call it, uh, for short, a barometric bomb. Michael said, explain the, the reason it was not an ammonia nitrate bomb, and of course this was several days after the explosion, and I'm on my way. I personally have made two trips to Oklahoma City out of my pocket, paid for it myself uh, to investigate this matter. I was so incensed over this government cover-up. And there's, uh, I have a report here. This report is available, by the way, in the back of the table. It's 160-some pages long. A lot of the information was too short to present it here this morning or this afternoon. Uh, but uh, some of the reasons we can tell you definitely it wasn't an ammonia nitrate bomb. It has too much moisture to be effective, as was the situation in Oklahoma City, it was just one. This report has like 16 instances of why it was not an ammonia nitrate bomb. And what usually happens is the propagation from the initial detonation would be uneven and it would scatter the bulk of the material before contributing energy to the bulk of the explosion. That bomb in Oklahoma City was directional, and I'll show you some pictures uh, in a few minutes uh, now that shows how the destruction of that building compared to the destruction of the bomb in Saudi Arabia. Um, and then another reason is an FBI agent testified the McVeigh shirt contained PDTN, which is uh, one of the chemicals for ammonia nitrate bomb. In one news report, and PETN was identified in another report, uh, the propagation would have been uneven and there would have been no way to shield such a blast. The ammonia nitrate bomb, fertilizer bomb, would go in 360 degrees up, down, all directions. In this particular case, as I said, it was directional. It was aimed right at uh, the Murrah building. There are, uh, as I said, a number of reasons why it was not an ammonia nitrate bomb. I'm going to skip through them real fast. The signature of the Oklahoma City bomb was not that of a fertilizer bomb, but it does match the signature of the A neutron bomb. And the University of Oklahoma Geology Survey reports that there were two bomb blasts in Oklahoma City 10 seconds apart. The media has ignored this as well as other evidence. An ammonia nitrate truck bomb of the size reported does not produce a crater, it blows upwards. A growing number of bomb experts are coming forward and saying that it appears two or more sophisticated bombs were detonated inside the building. As a matter of fact, there is a video being circulated. I have a copy of it. We'll show it in the workshop tonight where um, they showed that from five, for five hours after the blast, the news releases on television. And in two instances, in the first, they said that they discovered another bomb inside the building, and everybody was running from the building. And then they apparently detonated that, or not detonated, but uh, neutralized that bomb. And then they came back and they said there was another bomb, a second bomb inside the building. And in that particular instance, the press release was made that it was an army bomb and the Oklahoma City bombing uh, squad could not neutralize that bomb and they had to call the army in. The announcer made the statement that this is good news in a way because now we will know who manufactured the bomb because there is a way if you have the bomb of determining who manufactured it and also even after it's been detonated there is a way to determine who has manufactured that bomb. Other reasons why it was not ammonia nitrate bomb uh, bomb experts all over the country have argued that the bomb, truck bomb, 
was not parked at the right spot to do the resulting damage. Private citizens monitoring the Oklahoma City Band overheard the Oklahoma Bomb Squad discuss the finding of undetonated bombs with military markings on the canister inside the building. This was subsequently reported on national television as viewing audiences watched people run away from the building. The bomb could not have been built by a former uh, Prussian Gulf Army War veteran, Timothy McVeigh, and his rural Michigan farming uh, friends, brother James and Terry Nichols, at least not without the aid of persons as yet unknown. Those persons would need to possess knowledge of research classified at the very highest level of top secret by the U.S. government in addition to access to the various array of chemical and electronic components. Now, what, what Michael said was he felt this bomb was the signature of his bomb, and that's why that last statement was made. In other words, there is a cover-up in Oklahoma City. They blamed it on McVeigh. They've insisted that it was a ammonia nitrate bomb. Because if there's anything other than ammonia nitrate bomb, McVeigh and or other people would have to have sophisticated knowledge of what type of bomb it was. In this particular instance, McVeigh did not have the qualifications, the knowledge, or the sophistication to have put a bomb of the uh, type, the um, electro, uh, electrohydrodynamic gaseous fuel device together. Gunderson has been contacted indirectly by a federal criminal investigator who was involved in the investigation. He stated that the Oklahoma City bombing was with a dual charge. Had it been an ammonia nitrate bomb, the workers would not have been allowed in the area without wearing breathing uh, um, devices due to the presence of nitric acid vapors. He advised that John Doe II was vaporized by design, was to have been vaporized by design. That McVeigh is also a throwaway. He stated that the debris was collapsed toward the crater. There was something inside the building, probably another bomb. It was a shear and drop charge. The investigators have looked for signs of unoxidized ammonia nitrate pellets left over after the explosion, but none were found. And then uh, this investigator at the scene says that uh, my deductions were 100% correct. A nuclear physicist from one of the nation's top three government laboratories anonymously confirmed that the A-neutron device, as designed by Microconus Sudo, is far more likely to have caused the damage in Oklahoma City than a crude fertilizer bomb. And this just gives you a nice little quick diagram. By the way, uh, Galen Windsor has another theory on it, and Galen's going to also participate, and he's sitting down here in the front row in the workshop tonight. Uh, this is the size of uh, the neutron bomb, or the elect electronic uh, barometric bomb. I'm going to go over this pretty fast because now, how does it work? This particular bomb releases messing up the microphone. This particular bomb uh, releases a white chemical. I'm not a, a technician, so I'm going to give you in layman's terms. This particular bomb releases a white chemical cloud. Milliseconds later, a dark chemical cloud. And um, and visiting Oklahoma City, I talked to a witness on the seventh and eighth floor, two different people. And this white chemical cloud followed by the dark chemical cloud is milliseconds. It would be like this, boom, boom, with the second blast louder than the first and more powerful than the first. Uh, in talking to these people, these two men, they survived, of course. And I asked them to reenact what they heard that day. And both of them, independent of each other, and interviewed separately from each other, said it was like this. It was boom, boom, with the second explosion being louder than the first. That would have been the first blast. I feel, I don't know, I can't say for sure, that the 10 second blast later was probably a bomb on the inside. And I feel that there were probably two other bombs on the inside that did not explode, did not detonate, uh, I suspect that uh, the individuals who were responsible for the bombing had planned to lower level the total building with those other bombs on the inside. I talked to a assemblyman who was looking out the fifth floor of the state capitol building at the time of the bombing. He said he looked out when he heard the explosion and he saw a white chemical cloud about 150 feet reach up into the air followed by spiraling dark cloud so it was white and then it was dark. A lady who was interviewed on television, CNN, she, uh, and, and she was, I think, in the, in the area of the nursery, made the statement that everything was white and then everything was dark. 